All right, in this tutorial, what we want to do is show you how to move a course from one semester to the next. Now, the nice thing about Moodle is that once you have your course set up and you've taught the course once already, it's fairly easy to move it from this semester to the next. So, in this case, what I want to do is pretend like I'm I've taught the course previously in the spring of 2008, and I want to move it over to the empty spring of 2009 semester. So, the process is as follows. The first thing that you want to do is you request your course, um, your new course. When you request your new course, what they do is they give you the blank course for the, the current semester. What you now need to do is back up your old course that you've taught already and then move that over. So to get started with that, what you want to do is go to the administration block and click the backup button. What this is going to do is give you a screen where you can choose what information you want to back up. Now you have a lot of options when you're creating a backup file for Moodle. And you can see there's a ton of them. The first thing is, do you want to uh, choose what you want to back up? So in this case, do I want all my assignments? Do I want all my choices? Do I want all my forums? Yes, generally you're going to want to back everything up. The one thing you're probably not going to want to bother backing up, particularly if you're moving it from one semester to the next, is the user data. So in this case, I'm going to select none. This means that I'm going to back up my assignments, my choices, my forums, all the resources that I've uploaded, but I'm not going to add anything. I'm not going to keep things like discussion postings from students, that sort of thing. In this case, that's what you want to do. You just go to users and you select none because you don't want to back the users up from the old semester. You're going to want your new users from, for your new semester, so you're just going to want to ignore the old ones. You can choose to ignore logs. Generally, what you'll want to do is uh, keep the course files. You don't have to worry so much about the backup role assignments, uh, backup role assignments for these roles. So you can just say none here and hit continue. And what this is going to do is up here you can give it the name. Now it's an actual zip file. Unlike WebCT4, if you're familiar with that, um, WebCT4 doesn't produce a real zip file create something you can't open. This is something that you will be able to open. So down the road, if you need to go back in your zip file and pull out a file or something, you can do that. So I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it Spring 08 PTC. And it will tell you right here in red that if you selected to back up no users, um, that the, the module backups have been switched to without user data. That's all good. It will make sure everything's working for you. It tells you the backup details, what you're backing up exactly, so that you'll know exactly what, what you're going to be getting. And after you give it a name, you want to click the Continue button. What this is now going to do is take all the content from your course and create it, uh, put it into a zip file. It may take a couple minutes. If you have a lot of content, you know, be prepared to sit around for five, six minutes, you know, Probably shouldn't take that long, but you never know. And it'll tell you what it's done. And backup was completed successfully. That's a really good thing to see. That's what you want to see. When you're ready, you click the Continue button. Now what you have is uh, you're taken to your file screen, which we're going to, we have tutorials on that if you need them. And you're going to see the spring 08 ptc.zip file. This is probably the most confusing part because everyone's looking for a download button. There's really no download button here. Um, that's the most confusing thing. So what you're going to want to do is right click on the file and click Save Target As. If you're using Firefox, uh, it'll be a little bit different. It'll probably be called Save Download As, but you're going to save it as. And what it's going to do is download it um, to your computer. So in this case, I have my Spring 08 PTC, um, PTC.zip. I'm going to be downloading it to my desktop, and I'm going to hit the Save button. And it tells you right here it's downloading it. It's 16.7 megabytes. It gives you the progress. Um, you're basically waiting now for it to download. And as soon as it's done, we're good. So what we've now been able to do is go into the course that we've taught, I create a backup of that course that does not include the user data. We've downloaded that backup to our computer. 
And the next step is going to be to log into the new course, the blank course that has nothing in it, to upload this backup and restore it. So what I want to do is go to the NJIT link in this case, go all the way to the first link in the breadcrumb trail, and that's going to show me a list of all my courses that I'm associated with. So in this case, I'm going to go into my, uh, my new course. I called it for this um, tutorial, I called it New Semester. And you're going to have a completely blank course. Now, before you upload the backup and restore it, I'm going to show you a little tip. Um, I know because I taught that course before that it has more than 10 weeks or topics. And I know that these courses, by default, when you create them new, only have 10 weeks or topics. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that the empty course has enough topics to accommodate the previous course. So to do that, you remember you go to the administration block and you click on the settings link. And what we want to do is go and increase the number of topics to 18, because that's how many I had in the old course. So I move it to 18, increase it, hit save changes. And now I have a blank course that has the same number of topics as my previous course. So now what I want to do is I want to go to the restore option. And here when I click restore it takes you to the files area and it's going to um, look to see if there's any zip files to restore from. And because this is a completely blank course they're not going to be there. So what we're going to need to do is go to this upload a file button from the right and what we want to do is browse and we want to find that um, zip file from your previous semester. So in this case I found it. It's called Spring 08 PTC. I'm going to open it and now I'm going to upload this file. And This is the part where uh, in this case you'll see we're using Internet Explorer. The little Internet Explorer flags waving in the upper right hand corner and that way you know that you're uploading something. It may take a couple minutes because remember it's a 16 megabyte file. So um, you just wait a little bit for it to upload. And hopefully we won't have to wait too long. And then what it's going to do is um, appear here as a file that we can restore from. So this is uh, in our files area. It's in a folder called backup data. And here's the file. So what we want to do is we want to click restore. And it tells you you are about to start the restore process for and it gives you the name of the file. And it tells you that you're going to have the ability to um, choose whether you want to upload uh, and add it to an existing course or whether you want to start a completely new course. So you say yes, I want to continue. And here, what it's going to do is upload everything into your course and hit continue. And what it's done is it's now restored everything into Moodle. And it's asking you at this point, what do you want to do? You have two options. If you go to an existing course and delete everything first, what it's going to do is wipe everything out of your old course. If you have a blank course, completely blank course, no forums, then this is a great option. I recommend that you select this. If you already have some things added to your course, you have some discussion forums, students are asking questions, you do have the option of just um, adding everything to an existing course. And that will work too. It'll just take everything and add it to what's already there. So in this case, I'm going to go to an existing course, deleting it first. It knows that in this backup there is no uh, user data. So you just scroll down to the bottom and you hit continue. And it tells you note this process can take a long time. Restore this course now. And 
right now what it's doing is taking the contents of that zip file that's been uploaded, it's been unpackaged, and it's taking it and it's putting it all into your blank course so that everything that you created before will reappear. Now the one thing to keep in mind while we're waiting for this to happen is, um, as I showed you, if you're using a weekly layout, you can go into the settings under the administration tab and change the start date. The one thing that will need to be changed manually are the start and the end times for any quizzes or assignments. So for example, if you have eight assignments and they were set to um, expire at a specific time last semester, you will need to go and update that. But the nice thing is that uh, everything else will be um, changed for you. So right now it told me the restore was completed successfully, I hit continue. And now here's the course. Looks exactly like it did before. It's got the right number of weeks. It's got the right number of um, uh, all the same links are there, and it's great. Really easy to do. Now all I have to do is go by and modify the start time for the assignments.